Okay, this is the state of disassembly that we'll start with on the 1077 once we've removed the stock and the outer casing, the right side casing, which will be the top casing in this demonstration. So we've got our piece of cellophane, clear cellophane covering it, which we'll use when we take it apart shouldn't really be necessary but it's always good to do that just to make sure nothing comes popping out now the parts as you'll see them here are basically how it should look if it was undisturbed but I'm kind of I've kind of put them back together so that you can see how they should look like when you're reassembling. So the first thing that's going to come out for sure is going to be this trigger spring here. See that's under pressure there and that'll just pop pop out and it'll just kind of be laying in there sideways when you take this off. So you want to definitely keep that although we will be replacing that with a slightly smaller spring from a pin and then another thing that will happen is this bushing which is basically just a small metal, metal cylinder which sits over this pin on the hammer will come off and that will just be laying there and that slides right on there like that so we'll keep that, we need that, take that off There's going to be a part up here which consists of another small hollow pin and a kind of metal flange tab that's angled along with a V spring underneath it and that will come out as well probably pop loose if it doesn't it will once you start disassembling so we can take our trigger out that's all basically one piece there set that to the side and then we can go ahead and grab this part ease it out and you'll see the spring come out behind it that's what that piece looks like the pin stayed in the spring did as well like I said it'll want to come out so there's those pieces I see it better in my hand there actually best to put them in a container of some kind rather than just letting them sit out the small pieces at least okay so we've pretty much taken out all of the small things there is another spring down here which hooks onto the hammer into a plastic pin there And then the hammer is pivoting on a pin right there. So we can take that pin out. And that spring is still attached. set our hammer there so basically all we have in there now is the valve and the plumbing from the uh, tube across the barrel 
into the valve. So that is how we take apart the trigger assembly and hammer. Okay, so this is what the magazine looks like when it's disassembled. And there's basically two side panels and they just come apart. Two screws from one side. And this isn't exactly how it's going to look when you take it apart. This spring might pop out so you have a danger of losing that spring and it's small so you, it hits the carpet you're probably not going to find it so go ahead and put your cellophane over or bag or whatever you're using to cover it if it doesn't pop out it'll be under pressure and these parts here these two plastic parts are trying to move apart and come undone and you can you'll see that that spring is wanting to pop out on you. So you probably just want to go ahead and relieve it to begin with so it doesn't you don't get any surprises and lose it. Then once you do that, you can go ahead and take that, set it aside. Same with this one, there's just a little pin, plastic peg right there, I should say, that that spring uh, sits on. That's just holding the uh, two sides of the magazine together. So you put that aside. This kind of like L bar looks like a miniature nightstick. That will just kind of like fall. And it actually works better on so it'll just sit loose. It doesn't fit well on this side. It actually fits much better on the other side put it in like this. See, and that's how it's supposed to go. Or, I'm sorry. It'll go like this because it goes across that gap there. And it loads the pellets. So it sits nicely there, so when you reassemble, you can always just leave that there instead of trying to balance it there because it does not want to sit right over here. So you can set that aside. Now you're basically just left with three parts here. This one, what it does is it slides like this when you pull the trigger that'll slide so again on a semi-automatic gun like this everything is actuated based off of the trigger pull which means the magazine clip rotating all of these parts moving it's all based on the trigger pull so smoothing out these sides because you can see there's some rough spots there. I've actually already sanded this, but it's sliding back and forth. And the smoother those sides are, the easier it's going to slide and ultimately less resistance, less friction, which will hopefully translate to less uh, trigger pull. So if you want to go through this and take apart the magazine you can smooth out these sides with some sandpaper 400 200 grit get it nice and smooth and then when that's sliding you're not going to have any resistance there um, another part this up here which is under tension of that spring that we small spring we removed it's got a hole right there and there's again another plastic peg there which it pivots on now you have this little piece here which just by itself rotates or sits freely in there so that's one of those things where if you're not paying attention you're going to take this apart, you're just going to see loose 
small pieces that are shaped really weird and don't seem to correlate to anything. So that's why you got to pay attention on that. Or you'll lose track of, of what they're supposed to do. But this piece here at the bottom has another peg. And this one here has a hole in it. They're so tiny, it's hard to even hold with my hands. So it's got a hole there. And that peg basically fits in that hole like this. Okay. And there is a groove here. Yeah, actually, we'll take that off so you can see better. So once that is in, see that just moves up and down like this. That's all that does. And that little tiny part sticks out and engages the clip, rotary clip. Okay. And it's just set in there. There's nothing holding that in. So once this, these will start kind of loosening up. And you can see kind of different angles in there where that engages this part here. So that is moving back and forth like this, pushing that up. And with that small spring over here in place, that gives it the return and the tension that it needs to actuate like that. So you can um, replace that spring too if you want. with a lighter spring, but or shorten or compress the spring that it comes with. And that could ultimately help. Um, but definitely smoothing out the sides of this piece here, that's gonna be your number one thing you wanna do. And that's really all you can do in here is either mess with that little spring or smooth out that piece on both sides all right so that's it for the uh, magazine mods okay so our next stage of the disassembly is removing the barrel which is actually really easy you just have to remember that you need to take this one screw out flathead screw on the other side which normally we're not messing with the bottom side of it but it's right on the other side here. So just undo that. You'll feel the whole thing loosen up and the barrel will actually just slide right out completely. So there it is. Then you're left with this kind of weird uh, valve and plumbing and you'll feel it's kind of loose and it wants to rotate and you just kind of carefully turn it and pop it out of there. Set that aside. At which time the bottom part of the casing is completely empty now. There's no other parts. And then you have your tube and your barrel shroud. And you can take that spacer out if you want. That just slides right out. And so what you would do at this point is this site, there's basically a groove cut in the front of the shroud. Remember this isn't the barrel, this is the barrel. 
So that's just held in with friction and you need to bang it out from the inside uh, to avoid damaging it. So you need like a dowel or something that'll fit in there. That's the 24 inches long. That's the length of the shroud. And then you can just tap that front side out. Because there is a mod that you'll do on the barrel. You want to recrown it. Um, probably use from both ends. Um, you want to kind of open up the breech end a little more so that it takes pellets easier, seats them better, and then for accuracy, recrown the muzzle. So that's what you'll do on the barrel, and then you want to. Uh, you'll have to fabricate actually a bushing of some kind which that piece isn't going to work but uh, it's basically s supporting the barrel inside the shroud kind of like a donut that'll wrap around and, and fit inside the shroud to, to keep it from wobbling so that'll be another mod that we'll do But at this point, um, you don't really need to take it apart much further aside from dismantling the valve itself, which is a whole nother deal in and of itself. But we're pretty much broken down to uh, where we can do several mods and then uh, put it back together. Okay, so they say that you're supposed to put a 24 inch long dowel down here and tap out the front sight, but there's actually another way you can do it if you don't have that, because I didn't. See, basically, it's kind of hard to hold it, but you just take a flathead, preferably as, as big of a blade on it as possible, because you don't want to chop that. And then you just tap it with a hammer or something heavy. Basically, that pushes it out. So you see, it just goes like that. So that's how you can get that front blade side out of there without going from the uh, breech end. And just slides in and out like that. And that way you can get at it from the barrel from uh, both ends now. And also if you wanted to take this off and replace it with something, if you're using a scope, uh, you could plug that or something or attach a muzzle brake to it if you don't need that front blade sight. So that's all you okay. do on that one. So got the barrel here. This is the breech end. So you can tell it's got the recess there where this butterfly piece clips in. So I basically just took this Dremel bit and went around in the inside and just opened that up a little bit more. Now when you're using the Dremel tool like that, you got to be really careful. I even use this one on, typically you want one that's more rounded, this one's kind of pointed because it's been used. Um, but I also crown the muzzle end just very gently, just enough to put a little bit of a kind of rim or, it's kind of hard to see. kind of countersinking that uh, inner rim around the, the muzzle there. So you can use that and that'll take away this uh, Dremel bit. That'll take away some material 
And then I also chucked up a brass screw in my drill and then went ahead and just kind of rotated it around as I was drilling and that helps to smooth things out and then once I've done that and I've got a pretty good crown going then I can take my Dremel again and this is just the uh, kind of hard cotton buffing bit and again you're going in this that kind of orbital motion so you're getting the spinning and then the, the orbital like that And that's just going to take away any burrs or anything that's in there. That really has a sharp edge on it. So if I push too hard, it's just going to cut right into that. But on the muzzle end, you can really lay into it. And I even rotate the barrel with my fingers just in case this motion is imperfect. Turning the barrel too will make sure that one side doesn't get it too much. So that's looking pretty good to me. I'll then uh, take my cleaning rod here. And it's uh, 177 caliber. And I'll use that brush and I'll really brush that really good, the brass wire brush. Just clean out the whole barrel. I mean, it's good, good to do that anyways and I'll make sure that both of these ends are nice and uh, polished and no burrs so that we get the best uh, pellet entry and exit from the barrel as possible. So that's what we're going to do for the crowning of the barrel work and then we'll move on to our next mod. Okay so we're going to do some mods to the hammer here. Our pin in. So you can see I have it marked off right there and right there. And there's a space in the compartment which is empty even when all the parts are together back here as well. So if we take some lead and we adhere it to that can fill in that space and make the hammer heavier. Same up here. Put some lead right there. And we'll just use some Gorilla Glue and glue that on. And that will make the hammer strikes heavier each time. And uh, hopefully give more output out of the valve. And by increasing the hammer's weight that will give you more power without uh, affecting the trigger pull and what I've used for the the weights is just uh, old pellets so I took two 22 caliber pellets smashed them together and then I got one here so it'd be a total of three 22 caliber pellets of extra weight on the hammer for each strike and then I, I degreased it and then took my Dremel tool and marred up the spots where I'm going to glue to so it's, it's roughed up so it'll take the glue better.
because there's going to be a lot of pressure and vibration every time it strikes wanting to knock that loose so we got to make sure that's glued on there really well so that is our hammer mods okay I've got everything assembled now that was a lot of work I had to take this panel top panel on and or side panel on and off several times because things just weren't right so some of the pitfalls were the safety wasn't in place when I reassembled properly so I had to take it apart and make sure it was in its spot right there uh, this barrel release tab wouldn't work it would be like locked into place and you can actually put that on backwards so that that could be one issue but ironically there's five screws that should go in this panel and typically Crossman sends it to you with at least one missing so the one missing on mine was down here however the first time I tried to reassemble this screw it was like it didn't want to go in and in fact the screw was too long that it looks like it would have drilled right into the barrel so I'm not sure and I'm positive I was using the screw that it came with so I think that it's just sloppy practice at the manufacturer to where that screw that they gave isn't the one that's supposed to go in there so I kept putting it in and then the barrel release wouldn't work and it's because the screw was drilling into the barrel and holding it in there keeping it from moving and again I don't know why <laughs> they would put that screw in there and not have the right length so I went ahead and just took that screw and put it in the missing spot over here because I don't have a screw for this and the one that it came with prevents the gun from working properly so now there's just an empty hole there but that's fine it doesn't actually technically require all of those screws to be secure so that was another pitfall um, pretty much went back together okay after that uh, however there is another issue and this has happened with another semi-automatic co2 gun that I've modified so I was well aware of the possibility of this happening. All right, so we pull the trigger and the trigger doesn't return. You have to actually touch it, push it back a little and it'll, then it'll return. Now the reason this happens is because I replaced that return spring in there with a uh, thinner, lighter spring and it doesn't quite have enough strength to return that trigger on its own. Now this is good in a way because the problem with the way these guns are designed is it has to have a strong uh, return spring so when you pull the trigger the trigger goes back on its own and this it almost wants to now but not quite. However that return the pressure going back is also what you're counteracting when you squeeze the trigger so that directly affects the poundage on your trigger pull so if it doesn't have enough power to push it back that just means you have a lighter trigger pull and also it kind of acts as like a trigger stop so when you pull the trigger it doesn't immediately once it cycles through the action push back which could possibly affect accuracy so in a way that's a good thing um, the only issue is that you can't really rapid fire with the trigger automatically returning however this gun is not meant to be rapid fired because it's co2 so you will uh, cool the co2 cartridge create condensation or frosting which will lower the feet per second the efficiency so you actually don't want a rapid fire and I, and I don't I generally try to wait as long as possible between shots now that being said 
<laughs> you can still pull the trigger, touch it, and that takes a fraction of the amount of time that it would for a regular pump gun or other type of uh, CO2 gun where you have to manually load the pellet. So you can still rapid fire with, you know, probably one second intervals just by doing that. So it's not that big of a deal. But again, that's the price you pay because I wanted a light trigger pull and it is much lighter now, a little bit smoother. So I probably took at least, I would say three pounds, two to three pounds off of the trigger pull. So it's just a lot better now. Um, Aside from that, everything looks pretty good on it. So that's what you have to do. It's just push your finger back behind it and it'll push it forward. I honestly don't think that's a big deal. clip comes out. Haven't actually fired it yet, so we'll see once I load it up with CO2 and sight it in again how well it shoots. It was already shooting accurately before, so it's uh, that was at short range. So I'm sure at longer ranges because I recrowned it and secured the barrel, it's going to be more accurate overall consistent especially and then just the fact that the trigger is much better will give me uh, better shooting as well all right so that's it that's uh, taking apart and modding a 1077 um, you know I didn't do the valve mods because those can be pretty complex and I didn't want to deal with that right now so we may do that in another video but other than that appreciate the views make sure to like comment subscribe Thanks for watching.